Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Elvis Popchin. I'm a senior solutions architect here at AWS. Thank you for joining me today. Today's session, we want to look at VMware Cloud on AWS, specifically site recovery as it relates to disaster recovery. One of the first things that we want to look at is the current customer data center and what they're currently running, vSphere version, vCenter version, as well as their disaster recovery current plans. One of the things that we glean from the disaster recovery is the recovery time objective and recovery point objective. When we look at these two things, if we see the customer has a five minute to two hour RTO and a five minute to 24 hour RPO, we typically recommend site recovery. Once we have the, that information, we take a look at the customer's current AWS account and setup. We want to make sure that they currently have an account and that the customer has a customer VPC with network for private subnet and public subnet is that, if that's a requirement. VMware Cloud on AWS does require a customer VPC to be set up with private subnet. This is a requirement for VMware Cloud on AWS to actually function as it is a managed service. Once VMware Cloud on AWS is deployed, there are actually three main components that are deployed. As you can see, we have vSphere, which includes vCenter and vSphere for hypervisor, NSX for your network, gateway, and firewall policies, LSV, as well as vSAN for storage. As you can tell from this architecture, NSX will deploy an NSX T0, which is your main router or connection point into VMware Cloud on AWS. There's also a CGW that gets deployed, which is your compute gateway, as well as your management gateway. Management gateway is where all of your SCDC, or software defined data center, VMs such as vCenter, NSX Manager, HCX, and site recovery appliances will go into. From there, the CGW is where you actually would deploy all of your workloads. In this scenario, you can see that there's a application network as well as a public or DMZ network for your web servers and other workloads. There's also another component called a virtual gateway. This is also known as a VGW. This is automatically provisioned as part of your VMware Cloud on AWS deployment. The primary use case for this is to actually connect a direct connect. In this scenario, or this architecture, you'll see it's denoted as DX. Direct connects comes in various bandwidth configurations, anywhere from 50 megabits per second all the way to 100 gigabits per second, depending on your region or your service provider location. Once you have your direct connect set up with a private VIF or a private connection into VMware Cloud and AWS, you're able to then go into your VMC console. This is your VMware Cloud console where you actually deploy your SDDC. You'll then go into your SDDC and there's an option for add-on services. And there you can actually click add site recovery. This will automatically deploy these two appliances, as you can see, to your SDDC. One thing to note, Site Recovery is a licensed product. It is licensed per VM, so be aware of that. Once you have Site Recovery deployed and configured, it automatically registers it into your VMware Cloud AWS vCenter. From there, you can actually log in and create recovery plans and so forth. Now typically what we see is customers use VMware Cloud on AWS as a disaster recovery site. Um, we've also seen some cases where VMware Cloud on AWS is the source site and there's another VMware Cloud on AWS site or even their customer's own data center as a recovery disaster site. Once you have this set up within your VMware Cloud on AWS environment, you're able to then deploy those same appliances within your on-premise data center. So you'll have the site recovery appliance 
and your vSphere replication appliance. Once this is all set up, both on your on-premise and VMware Cloud environment, you're able to then link the two sites together. They get paired up, and then from there, your recovery plans, or also denoted as RP, is actually configured and set up. There are protection groups you can set up with groups of VMs, and the recovery plans are set up on top of protection groups that allow you to manage the IP addresses that get um, set up on each VM as they get uh, failed over. There are some best practices that you want to consider when doing site recovery. Some of them include maintaining recovery plans, testing recovery plans, ensuring that you actually have a disaster recovery site available within the region, and making sure that site recovery or your DR is part of your change management process. We appreciate your time, and this concludes our session for today.